This has got to stop. Point of the stop. Good morning, OWP Galaxy! I only say good morning because it could be a morning that someone's watching this. If not, a good night. This could be the video you watch before bed. But welcome all species to our wrestling perspective. I nearly stuffed up the click there. If you want to make it your wrestling perspective, hear me out. It's just as bizarre as this lime green t-shirt. All you need to do is add Y. Yeah. And it makes it your wrestling perspective. But would you believe it? This video is the continuation of our weekly perspective. And we are up to episode 16. Yeah, damn, 16. And this whole episode will be focusing on the whole week of professional wrestling. Within the 10th of May 2020. All the way up to the 17th of May 2020. Yeah, I'm even going to cover money in a bank in this one. That happened on the Sunday in America. But Monday for me, that's why it's... In the week of this one. Now let's kick it off with the WWE and their Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And just a quick roundabout of what we actually thought about it. And you know what? Our perspective on it, we actually thought it was a half-decent pay-per-view. Besides the SmackDown Women's Championship match. It's not that I don't like the women's wrestling. It's just that match was just a train wreck. I'm just not a fan of Tamina. I'm not going to say anything more. And then we move straight on to finally the boys retain. I actually touched the poster this time. Fantastic. See, that's why I'm wearing a New Day t-shirt. They retain and continue their eight-time tag team championship reign. If you didn't see that, that's me doing my hip movements down there. You probably don't want to see that. And the second thing that really stuck out to us. Oh, Lord. That Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman match. All the hidden references and the puppets all coming up. And then at the very end, the Easter egg that the Fiend's going to go after him. Yes. So much yes. How about yes? Nice. And last but not least, when we found out the winners were like, Asuka. <laughs> Who would have thought, huh? Out of the women that I had there, I'm like, come on, Shayna, come on, Shayna, and it didn't happen. Ended up being Asuka. Yes, I'm not angry either way, but then a person that didn't climb the ladder won the money in the bank. Otis has missed the money in the bank? I was speechless like this. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. And now, even with a few days to recuperate from it, I'm still speechless. Legit, Otis and... What? Now let's kick off the week of wrestling. And what was the day straight after Money in the Bunk? We're talking about WWE Presents Monday Night Raw. I think I'm getting a proper hang of that voice now. I feel a bit of a tingle when I'm actually doing it. But the five points that stuck out to me... Woo Did you see the first point? Asuka did not just win the money in a bunk. You know what was in that briefcase all along? Yeah, I'll do finger quotes because I don't think they'll actually have it hanging up there. If they did, that was a nice easter egg. But Asuka did not just win the money in a bank. No, it wasn't the money in the bank. It was the championship. So Asuka is now your raw women's champion. You know what? I'm not mad one bit. But then right after that, we hit the breaking news, and Becky Lynch says that she is... Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? That she is pregante. That she is pregnant. That she is pregnant. Honestly, it's great to hear that Becky Lynch is going to head over to motherhood, but it's kind of sad to see that her reign is ending. But, you know what? Some kids that are going to call themselves with their man and nicknames that Seth has... <sighs> and I'm surprisingly, with all of this going on, that WWE didn't utilize a storyline saying who is the father of Becky Lynch? Is it Ronda Rousey? 
The second point that stuck out to me for Monday Night Raw is, okay, wait, is Baron Corbin a wild card now, whatever open roster invitational they have? Listen, what about I pitched this idea, I know my ideas are going to lead nowhere, but the King of the Ring tournament, why don't you have the winner of the King of the Ring tournament be the wild card so they can go across all three brands? That's what makes it prestigious if you're not going to give them that championship opportunity like what it used to have beforehand. But how? Corbin pegs two people off a building. Two people off a building in Alistair Black and Rey Mysterio thinking that they're gone finished. He loses the money in a bank match. Now somehow he's in line for a WWE World Heavyweight Championship opportunity against Drew McIntyre. Third point being for Monday Night Raw. Do we have to hit that counter again? Yes we do. The Aussie counter. But I have to say, thank Lord that we finally see the Iconics back in the WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, the Tag Team Division. Ah, oh, nearly said Tag Team Champions, like what Samoa Joe biffed up on, huh? Maybe that was a purpose slip up, like what he did, huh? Listen, no? Okay? But it's great to see the Iconics back and hopefully they get those straps back because Iconics are the future and the future looks Iconic. Hmm. Fourth point being for Monday Night Raw, you know what, I'm never going to complain about how my week's ever going to go again. Just because Rey Mysterio, on the Sunday, got pegged over a building, WWE headquarters. Then, see how I was looking around with my eyes? I'm able to do that because on Monday Night Raw, you know what happened to Rey Mysterio? He had his eye smacked onto a corner of steel steps. Oofed. Yuck. Ugh. You know what, he deserves it after the masks he's been wearing. No, no. Alright? And fifth and final point for Monday Night Raw, Randy Orton and Edge are going to meet one more time and that backlash. You know what, I'm actually pretty excited after the mixed comments that the other match had at WrestleMania. You knew that it wasn't just going to end there and I'm not too, bad, like, not too angry at an Edge versus Randy Orton again because the amount of video packages that they can do for it even just with the Raw segment and they just add seven years of rated RKO and all that stuff you know what it's gonna be good now right after Monday Night Raw we're moving straight on to the Wednesday Night War between All Elite Wrestling AEW and NXT I always say this you can love all professional wrestling but listen sometimes you may have a preference in what you watch and this might be your preference. Maybe this week, AEW was your preference. Or you're like, no, 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 NXT was my preference. That's completely fine. But let's see what our perspective was on it. We're going to go three points by three points. And let's kick it off. Starting with All Elite Wrestling, AEW on TNT. We're talking about that Dynamite. Yeah, a lot of views. First point for All Elite Wrestling Dynamite, we're talking about Hikaru Shida is the new number one contender for the AEW Women's Championship and will be facing Nyla Rose, the native beast at Double or Nothing. And you know what? Shida is my pick. Come on, Shida. She's actually my favorite female from All Elite Wrestling and it would be great to see her wear that gold. Well, rose gold. Well, you know, the actual gold that they added onto it. Second point being, we got to say, a resting piece of Vanguard. You know, you know what? I honestly know how it feels to own a drone because uh, they are a lot of a handful and you end up getting emotional attachments. And sometimes when I want to leave you, it, it gets hard. And I couldn't imagine the pain that Matt Hardy felt. And third and final point that stuck out to us for All Elite Wrestling, we've got to say Mike Tyson is heading back into the squared circle as he is going to be crowning the new All Elite Wrestling TNT Champion to the winner of the either the Executive Vice President, one quarter of the Executive Vice Presidents in All Elite Wrestling, Cody, we can use the last name now, Rhodes, or it could be the Murder Hawk, the guy represented by Jake the Snake Roberts, Lance Archer. Either way, yes, this match is just keeps building up, and the incredible stuff that's behind it, even Mike Tyson now, the Iron Fist. Iron Fist? That's a superhero. Now moving straight on to the black and gold brand in NXT, and we gotta say congratulations to Imperium in Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner, as they 
beat. Well, technically, just Matt Riddle after Timothy Thratcher walked out on Matt Riddle. Oh, you naughty Thratcher. And you know what happened? They walked away with brand new artillery, brand new hardware on their chest because then Barium find the Matt Sacred. But now they can find the Matt Sacred while carrying the new gold that they have. And that's the NXT Tag Team Championships. Second point being for NXT. I'm not going to lie. I had a bit of a giggle. And that was when DX both introduced the new NXT TakeOver in your house. Yeah, in your house. Not in his house, not in their house, but in your house. Never want to come to my house. And third and final point for NXT was a bit of reminiscent from the Evolve and the Progress and all of those indie greats. We're talking about that Timothy Thratcher versus Matt Riddle, even though he ended up in a roll-up. We know that this isn't going to be the last time they meet and NXT finishing off with Timothy Thratcher and Matt Riddle. Who can complain? Yes, this is just going to get better and better. So, with further ado, ding a ding a ding, the winner of this week. Listen or not? Well, listen or not. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. The winner of this week is NXT. <coughs> Now straight after that Wednesday Night War, we're moving straight on to the NXT UK Memory. After I got that message, I'll continue it on. To the wrong part! But my NXT UK Memory for this week will have to be for NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Yeah, their pay-per-views are a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> that rhymed as well. But we're talking about the crowning of the NXT UK Tag Team Championships. And that was when Grizzled Young Veterans put on a fantastic match against Mustache Mountain. Two, well, two-thirds of a British strong style. And you know what? I really liked it. I liked it a lot. A lot, a lot. That was actually incredible, that match. And it's solidified what their tag team division was going to be all about. And their tag team division is legitimate about proper working tag teams. And it hasn't really had a bad tag team represent those belts at all. Now, moving straight on to the blue brand. And we're talking about SmackDown on Fox. And what were the five points that stuck out to me? First point being for Friday Night Smackdown, Otis coming out to Miz TV and me not realizing, oh my god, he actually did win the money in a bank and still singing into my head. And it was just like, I imagine it, and please don't take this out of context, I imagine it as if like if they gave Eugene the money in a bank or they gave Santina Morella the money in a bank. It's it's funny, it's going to be great material, but are they legitimately going to give him the title? And his cartwheel that he did on Miz TV, he's a very agile man for a big muscle belly bloke. Second point being, for Smackdown on Fox, I had to go all the way into the bush to vent my frustrations on why they actually relinquished the Intercontinental Championship off of Sami Zayn, but they kept it on Andrade, the United States Championship, after what he did. Because, you know, he's a woofer. Woo! Yeah, exactly right. Roll the clip. Why? And also what confuses me, where is Cesaro in this tournament? Now you want to peg AJ in because it's an open invitational for all rosters now to cross brands like a wild card again. And you know what really hurts my head? The guy that pegged two people off a building at Money in the Bank, King Corbin, not only loses the Money in the Bank itself after that, gets an opportunity, a future opportunity, to go straight on to Raw and earn him, not even earn himself, just say, yeah, I want a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. And what did he do on SmackDown? He was in the tournament to crown the new Intercontinental Champion. Why? Third point being for Friday Night Smackdown, you know what, Elias advancing, finally he beat Baron Corbin, King Corbin, you know why, I don't even know why Corbin was in there, why he couldn't have just put a random guy for Elias to beat and then Corbin, you know, ends up attacking Elias to continue on instead of him smashing a guitar and, 
I'm just happy that Elias advanced in instead of King Corbin. And then Daniel Bryan also advanced in the tournament after beating his now training partner but former rival in Drew Gulak. They are both technically sound and the matches that they provide are like five star classics even though they get five minutes, one minute or 20 minutes. That's a match that I'd constantly want to see at a pay-per-view like an Edge and Orton. Just give them one more match of Backlash. Why not? Fourth point being for SmackDown on Fox, that new Forgotten Sons promo and even that little disclaimer beforehand saying that their views do not represent anything that the WWE believe in. And I'm like, ooh, this is going to be harsh. And it was harsh. They're like, listen, we went all the way overseas to represent the United States and, a blah, 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 and we all we got was to be forgotten and hands on chest and all that stuff. And you know what? Main roster... Even though if you count NXT as main roster, but still, SmackDown main roster is treating them well with TV time. I mean, Forgotten Sons, pfft. And fifth and final point for Friday Night SmackDown, we saw Mr. Money in a Bunk team up with the Universal Champion in Braun Strowman. I was actually hoping that The Fiend would come out, attack Braun Strowman, and then look at Otis and wait for Otis to pin Braun Strowman. That would have been so brilliant. But you know what happened? They ended up celebrating at the end, even though Otis has got everything. He's got the money in the bunk. He's got the girl. He's got everything. And he's got the... Oh, yeah! Sounding like a Wario that's in professional wrestling. And Braun Strowman with his new Trident. Oh. Looks like he can be in for a long run, huh? Heading straight over to Impact Wrestling and let's see what the three points were that stuck out to me. First point being the whole intro with Moose taking it over saying no, I need the TNA voice, something stuck in my heart. I need the TNA voice to represent me as I am the true TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And you know what, that belt fits in nicely and there's not enough phrase that I can throw away into Moose's lane because he is actually incredible. Honestly, with him carrying this belt, any belt in Impact seemed like it should have been on him sooner. But it's great that he's trying to revitalize the old TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Because even though it was a bit of a bootleg of the big gold, I enjoyed seeing it when EC3 held it. Because EC3 was a good World Heavyweight Champion, but let's see what Moose can bring us. Second point that stuck out to me, we're talking about Trey, Miguel and Hernandez are the ones that go forward and advance into the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship number one contendership tournament. Whew, what a mouthful that is, huh? But Trey Miguel, oh, I honestly hope that he gets far, but we all know that it's a clear path to see who's actually going to win. Third point that stuck out to me for Impact Wrestling and what a debut and an addition to the amazing Impact Knockouts roster division slash that they already have and that's Kimbo Lee putting on one of the biggest shockers in her debut beating Jessica Havoc. You know what? I'm liking this because the division just gets stronger and stronger. There's not a division in Impact Wrestling that I kind of think is lacking except the new TNA World Heavyweight Championship division. But then he's beaten all the former ones. See, I'm just rambling on. And that was our weekly perspective, episode 16, done and dusted. Listen, if you want more our wrestling perspective, we're not just on the YouTube, hear it out. We're also on Facebook. Yeah, we're on that Facebook. If you head over, see where that logo is appearing there. If you head over to our wrestling perspective on Facebook and give that page a like, we do daily posts. We do some funny little throwbacks and we also do some little trivia. That's correct, trivia. And you're like, what do you mean trivia? We do prize giveaways and there'll be one heading very shortly to one of these social platforms. It could be YouTube, it could be Facebook, or it could be the next one, which is that white bird on Twitter. And we are at OWP YouTube when it heads to Twitter. And we also do a couple throwbacks there, and we do a lot of retweets because we see a lot of moves and a lot of wrestlers that we grew up with. Also, before this video finishes, we got to say thank you to everyone that supports us and the whole OWP Galaxy. Also, make sure to wash them hands and watch wrestling and make sure to stay inside because if we stay inside and watch wrestling before you know it we can go outside and watch wrestling also before I finish this video there's a sneaky little surprise yeah we're gonna be reaching up to 17 episodes next week that's where I'll cover NWA super power 
and that's where we'll have our OWP, well, our weekly super perspective. We'll try to do something with that. Get away, fly.